seven different smartphones, seven different chipsets, three different benchmarks. This is Technic and this is a benchmark comparison and stress test between seven very different smartphones in which we will compare scores, frames per second, heat management, throttling and battery drain. All devices have been updated to their latest available software. All devices here are kitted with LPDDR5 RAM except for the Oppo and iPhone which are both stuck on LPDDR4X. We have 160 hertz refresh rate on the ROG Phone 3. 120 hertz on the Vivo and Xiaomi, 90 hertz on the Motorola, Oppo and Huawei, and we're still stuck to 60 hertz on the iPhone. The only Android device here that can go past Full HD Plus is the Huawei, but we're gonna bring it down to Full HD Plus, which is the standard resolution to match the other Android devices, and the iPhone is stuck somewhere between QHD and Full HD, which unfortunately cannot be changed. I have enabled all forms of high performance slash game modes on all devices here, except for the Motorola and iPhone which are unfortunately lacking these features. Our first benchmark here is Antutu and we're going to be running version 8.5.4 on the Android devices while the latest version for iOS is 8.3.8. .8. The second benchmark we'll be going through is Geekbench version 5.3.2 and the third one will be 3D Mark Wildlife. The ROG phone says it's the Strix edition on 3D Mark but I can assure you this is the fully fledged ROG phone 3 with a max clock speed of 3.1 gigahertz running the Snapdragon 865 Plus chipset. Can the new Snapdragon 870 powered Motorola Edges surpass the Snapdragon 865 devices? And more importantly, can it keep up with the 5 nanometer process node monsters, the Snapdragon 888, Kira 9000 and A14 Bionic? We'll have to wait and see. This is Technic and without further ado, let's go. We're going to kickstart things off here measuring the time at 20 past 3 in the afternoon with the battery percentages. We'll then compare this at the end of the test based on the duration of time. How much percentage has passed on all devices, how much they've drained as well as their milliamp hour per minute. We're going to do something similar when it comes to device temperature. However, this time we're going to be clocking the temperature after every interval, I guess you could say, after each and every individual benchmark. Starting with N22, then going through to Geekbench, and then last but not least, 3D Mark Wildlife. And 22 is all about testing out performance in terms of graphics as well as raw processing power. We're talking about GPU and CPU performance performance here, while with Geekbench it just focuses on CPU, the test that we're going to be doing today, and 3D Mark Wildlife is all about GPU and frames per second. Starting with Antutu here, none of them had any issues when running the first part of Antutu. Going into the second part, once again no issues here. The third part is the Terracotta Soldiers, and like I've said many times before, this is the most strenuous part of the test. And I know that many of you guys are thinking it already, and you always comment on my videos saying, guys, you know, the iPhone cannot be compared here when running and Tutu, since and Tutu themselves have stated that they are not cross compatible. This is not a cross compatible benchmark. You cannot compare iOS to Android when it comes to rendering due to using different APIs, that being the Metal API on iOS devices as opposed to Vulkan and OpenGL and OpenCL on Android devices. But it would be a shame to leave the iPhone out of here. And I just want to show you guys that the iPhone is still stacking up pretty great when rocking Antutu and how much better it actually does when running other benchmarks such as Geekbench and 3 d Mark. We'll get to those later, but as of right now, once again, no issues whatsoever here when running the third part of Antutu, the Terracotta Soldiers, all nice and flawless here. And now we're going to jump into the temperatures after we've hit Antutu. So after that Antutu bit, we have the hottest phone being the Vivo X60 Pro Plus. It also added the most in degrees Celsius and the coolest adding the least is the iPhone 12 Pro Max of course after Antutu. Moving on to Geekbench version 5.3.2. Now in my previous test I usually do 5.2.5 but it's been upgraded finally. It doesn't really necessarily mean that's good for the devices. It's a little bit tougher to handle. Once again the coolest device being the iPhone but the Vivo actually dropped by 0.1 degrees in Celsius while the Oppo was the hottest adding 2.2 degrees in Celsius. 
And the hottest overall is of course still the Oppo. Well, now the Oppo with 54.5 degrees in Celsius, which is pretty hot. I mean, the Vivo was pretty close to that off Dan Tutu. Running through 3D Mark Wildlife over here, this is not the stress test. This is just a one minute quick portion video and it looks really good on all devices. We're hitting some pretty solid frames. On the Snapdragon 888, we're hitting a good 30 odd frames per second. On the yesteryear Snapdragon 865, 865 Plus and 870 devices, we're hitting just over 20, I guess you could say, maybe 24, maybe just shy of 30. Getting to the last temperature heat dissipation management over here, we have 54.5 degrees in Celsius on the Vivo, adding 1.7 there. The least addition is the Mi 10 Ultra and the coolest device, the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And from start to finish, the Motorola Edge S added a whopping 15 degrees in Celsius and the least addition was 8.6 degrees in Celsius on the iPhone. Now, if we focus on the percentage of drain as well as the battery capacity of each device, we can then work out the 19 minutes that we took to run the test to get a milliamp hour per minute reading. Those are the scores that you see at the bottom with the most efficient, the best score being the lowest, which is the iPhone 12 Pro Max doing an incredible 15.5 milliamp hour per minute reading, which is really great after running three benchmarks and the worst being the Huawei Mate 40 Pro getting a whopping 20.8 milliamp hour per minute drain and the second worst being the Oppo. First benchmark score here, the Motorola Edge S rocking a Snapdragon 870 chipset getting just over 650,000 points. Then third, which is actually the Mi 10 Ultra running a vanilla Snapdragon 865. Now the big boys come out, the Huawei Mate 40 Pro with 684,000 points and the almighty Snapdragon 888 powered Vivo X60 Pro Plus 730,000 points is definitely nice to see. Geekbench measuring single core. First place is the iPhone, no surprise here with over 1,500 points. Second place, quite a jump down is the Vivo with 1,135 points. Then we go to third being the Huawei, still in a pretty similar range compared to the Vivo since the top three devices are all rocking five nanometer process node tech jumping down to a seven nanometer chip going to 994 points on the ROG phone 3. The ROG actually beat the 870 which placed fifth with 981 points. Then it goes to sixth being the Oppo with a lackluster Dimensity 1000 Plus chip also on seven nanometer tech beating the seven nanometer plus monster Mi 10 Ultra, which placed seventh due to throttling, which got a mere 596 points. Things are slightly different when we get to the multi-core score. We still have first place being the iPhone, second place being the Vivo, third place being the Huawei. Once again, all five nanometer process node chips taking the top three tiers over there. But now fourth, once again, the ROG Phone 3 with fifth, once again, being the Edge S and sixth this time being the Xiaomi outdoing the Oppo Reno 5 Pro even though the Xiaomi had a pretty bad score here and it was throttling it still came out on top with multi-core performance compared to MediaTek's Dimensity 1000 plus powered Reno 5 Pro and testing out the graphics part of things with 3D Mark Wildlife. First place, once more, the iPhone 12 Pro Max with pretty close to 8,000 points. Second place this time is no longer the Vivo, but the Huawei with over 6,000 points. Quite a big jump down to third place this time round is the Vivo with just shy of 6,000 points. Fourth place is now the Motorola Edge S edging out the ROG Phone 3 with a substantial lead. Sixth place is the Oppo Reno 5 Pro with a worst chipset than the Mi 10 Ultra and still beating it here. But you've got to bear in mind that the Mi 10 Ultra was once again throttling, which seems to be a common occurrence for Xiaomi devices. Now, if we focus on frames per second, we got the highest FPS on the iPhone 12 Pro Max with 46 FPS. Then we had 37.9 on the Huawei, 34.6 on the Vivo. What was really interesting is that we got 29.5 on the Snapdragon 870 powered Motorola device compared to the Snapdragon 865 plus powered ROG Phone 3 with five frames per second less than that. And a frame per second, one and a half frames per second less than that is the Mi 10 Ultra with 23.1 FPS, meaning that the Oppo Reno 5 Pro is sitting somewhere between the Snapdragon 865 and 865 plus in terms of graphics graphics rendering. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. A sub to the channel would be tremendous. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.